So, Daniel, we've got the Tate Gallery judgment from the Supreme Court, haven't uh, we? Long last, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's taken a little while, hasn't it? But um, uh, really interesting and quite controversial as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Very controversial because of the facts, and it's probably worth reminding everybody exactly what this was all about. So there was, uh, there was a residential block built quite near the South Bank in London. Um, it was a little unusual in that all of the flats... Um, had essentially floor-to-ceiling glass rather than mm-hmm. walls with, with windows cut out like, like in the room we're in. Um, now that was very good for the residents because it meant they got lots of light coming in, beautiful views of London. Um, unfortunately it also meant that when the Tate Gallery built a new public viewing platform that was mm-hmm. also meant to give wonderful 360 degree panoramic views of London, around half a million visitors a year were getting a fantastic view right into the flats of the people living in, in the near Blanks, Bankside block. Mm-hmm. So the owners said this was was quite a serious intrusion into their privacy. Mm-hmm. They brought proceedings in the High Court, um, in particularly um, specifically um, in the Court of Nuisance. They lost at first instance. They then also lost in the Court of Appeal and have now just won by a three to two um, bare margin, bare majority in the Supreme Court. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, that it wasn't a, a uni- unanimous uh, decision. Um, but it wasn't really so much that the majority and the minority differed on fundamental principles of law, was it? So much as how those principles actually should be applied to this particular scenario. Um, I thought it was interesting, actually, that uh, the majority, so that's Lord Leggett, seemed to think that it was quite normal in this locality to have floor-to-ceiling glass windows. And what the Tate Gallery had done by building this viewing platform was to be treated as quite unusual. Whereas the minority, with Lord Sales giving the judgment, rather saw the glass boxes for the flats as themselves being unusual for the area. And that seemed to quite influence the decisions they came to. It, it did. So I, I have a little bit of sympathy for the Tate here, much as I think it was overall the right outcome, because the factual findings at first instance were very much that for a cultural hub in London, this was a perfectly normal thing to do. It's perhaps worth, worth saying that Lord Leggett didn't say it was the fact of actually building the gallery itself, yeah. which was um, possibly causing the nuisance. It was the fact of having half a million people come onto it every year that he said was a particularly unusual uh, and almost onerous use of the land. But I think what that really shows is that the heart of the torts now, following what the Supreme Court, a particular majority, has said, is, is really these competing balances of, of ordinary use. Mm-hmm. And what swung it was the fact that the, the tenant's use, notwithstanding um, the possibly slightly unusual nature of the buildings, was nonetheless held to be ordinary and reasonable yeah. in a way that the Tate's was held to actually be extraordinary and abnormal. And that was because just the sheer number of people who were coming to the viewing gallery every year and actively, as it were, searching out these flats and, and looking at people, some with binoculars. And there were some quite stark findings of fact at first mm. instance. There were people posting pictures on Twitter with the hashtag no privacy. Lord Leggett says it was akin to living in a zoo in his judgment. So it was a, a, particularly, um, a particularly intrusive experience. Yeah. So it was interesting, wasn't it? Because there was one form of reasoning from Mr Justice Mann yes. in the Chancery Division. And then a different set of reasoning from the Court of Appeal and then the Supreme Court has decided that both of them are a bit wrong. A bit wrong and a bit right. So Mr Justice Mann started off by saying as a matter of principle nuisance can and indeed should protect privacy. It's Mm -hmm. a property tort, it protects the enjoyment of land and he said there was absolutely no principled reason why, particularly when you're dealing with a property like a home, your ability to to enjoy it without being gawped at by thousands of strangers um, should not be something that the law should afford protection to. Mm -hmm. Where the tenants lost before him was on the application of what he called a sort of reasonableness test. So he said what I need to do is essentially decide where the balance of reasonableness lies. And he said on the one hand, what the Tate's doing, because it's a cultural hub because it's an important tourist attraction um, it is within the bounds of reasonableness on the other hand because of the slightly unusual nature of these buildings and because there are steps that the owners could take to mitigate mm-hmm. um, mitigate the intrusiveness they could put up for example they could put their blinds down they could put up privacy film he said that balance of reasonableness fell in favor of the Tate the Court of Appeal said he was wrong on the second point. Actually, there's no obligation on the property owner to, um, to take steps to limit the nuisance being caused. If something's a nuisance, it's always a nuisance, whatever right. the nature of the property it's affecting. Um, where the Court of Appeal disagreed with him was on the, the principled point. They said actually mere overlooking is not something that the law recognises as a facet of the enjoyment of property and therefore is not something that nuisance can protect. Mm. So that's quite interesting, isn't it, that the Supreme Court 
were very keen to say all we're doing is um, applying established, long established mm. principles, and they cited a lot of 19th century cases. Whereas what the Court of Appeal had done, if we'd have continued down that route, was really carve out an area where nuisance, the tort, would not go, that, that the law will not protect you against this particular kind of issue, namely being, being looked at, visual intrusion into your home. And I think that's right. I think, as a matter of principle, nuisance should be capable of protecting any, any form of, of enjoyment of property. And perhaps where, where you stop it becoming overly capacious is in the application of, of the tests. So mm. part of where Mr Justice Mann was held to have gone wrong in the Supreme Court was by using this concept of reasonableness. They said actually reasonableness has essentially no analytical value. You have, while it's a useful label, you have fairly well established tests of substantial interference, common and ordinary user. Um, you know, things we all know. It's worth saying for practitioners this is a very useful judgment because it collects in one single place mm. eight what Lord Legger calls central propositions around which the law of nuisance is based. Um, so yes, I think it's more of a re-clarification than, than a complete restatement of the law. Mm. So do you see it as a, as a one-off kind of case or do you think there are ramifications for... I think these Other facts owners. are probably a one-off, um, but as is often the case, I think the legal principles will certainly ripple out. Um, for a start, I think it, it, the, the finding that nuisance, as a matter of principle, can apply to, um, to quite a wide range of interferences is potentially very powerful. It means nuisance mm -hmm. is going to be um, an evolving tort. Property law is responsive to changing uses of land, changing, changing norms in society, and so it's a tort that's going to continue to evolve. Mm -hmm. It also, I think, says something interesting about the interaction with, with the planning system, and I know you mm -hmm. think there was possibly a failure of the planning system here, don't you? That's what's always struck me, I have to say, is that the planning system ought to have spotted this issue and, and resolved it. And it was um, said, to, it was interesting to read the judgments and to note that it hadn't been picked up anywhere along the way no. as these two buildings had been developed and, and, and planned. So one would hope that in the future that the planning system might have picked up the issue and resolved it or at least ameliorated it so that we wouldn't need the common law to, to step in. But it's good to know that the common law is there um, and that remedies um, like uh, those for tort are, are available to property owners if the planning system lets them down. And in terms of other examples, it strikes me that um, neighbours who are in dispute might feel quite pleased that being, you know, having photographs taken or um, effectively surveillance of them mm. by somebody within, with whom they're in dispute would probably be caught by this judgment, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. It's, I, I, I'd like to think that the law would have responded anyway to quite, you know, quite extreme instances of, of invasions of privacy. Uh, I suppose I mean, you're right in as much as um, it, it's, it's a win for the claimant, so that might seem to be a big tick for people wanting to bring nuisance claims. But actually, I think the reasoning is, in fact, Lord Sales says this in, in the dissent, mm. is, is relatively conservative in some ways, because the mm -hmm. key point that comes out is, essentially, Lord, Lord Leggett says, this is all about live and let live. Um, so, long as, so long as what you're doing is not unusual, then the fundamental principle on which most of English property law is based is that you can do what you like on your own land. Mm. And I think in, in some ways the majority's reasoning is really just a big tick for people being able to build as they please, so long as it's not completely over, um, uh, over the bounds of normality. So I don't know if this is going to open the floodgates for a, a slew of, of new nuisance claims, but I guess that's something that's going to have to be worked out over the coming months and years. Mm, thanks. Well, good to talk to you about it. Thanks, you too, Thanks Daniel.